One, two, one, two, bam, 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 bam. One time for your mino. Whoop, 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 whoop. For every song that Black Eyed Peas has ever put out that went like multi-platinum, we have made songs for us, for us to listen to when we're riding in a car. Yeah. And now we're putting that kind of music out, right? We've made y'all music and we did a good job making music for you guys, for the world. And now this music is for us. If life is a gift, if life is a bitch, then I'm about to get it. I'm about to get it. I'm about to get it. Get, get it all. I'm about to get it. We started the Black Eyed Peas in 1995. Our whole premise back then was to like be the dopest lyricist imaginable. You know, we got a record deal early on in 1997. We saw the world, went on tour with like the Warp Tour, Macy Gray, Everclear, No Doubt. Like we toured with everybody. We never broke up. We just took a break. We still kept in touch, but I know Will was doing a lot of work in Ball Heights with, with his STEM program. Apple was doing stuff in the Philippines, and I was doing stuff at Standing Rock, Indian Reservations, and I think I learned a lot, not only to learn about the growth as individuals, but also as people. We didn't think that the worst was gonna happen, like Taboo getting cancer. I was diagnosed with stage two testicular cancer in 2014. You know, it was, it was crazy because I had been uh, touring on my own and just trying to like continue what I love to do is perform. And then when I got hit with cancer, it was like I was fighting for my life. I spent 12 weeks doing chemotherapy, five days a week, six hours a day. And it was like, it was a totally different perspective because now it was, I was running out of time because those moments where I wanted to give up, I, I felt like the chemo wasn't working. And I said to myself, you know, I want to I want to be there for my wife and my kids. But most of all, I want another chance to be on that big stage with my group because that's what I love to do. Not only that time away, I also learned a lot about my artistry and what I could bring to the Black Eyed Peas for the next run. The facility, the future here is a, a cross-disciplinary creative environment where designers, coders, developers, we all work out of this building and collaborate. Black Eyed Peas, this is our home where we work out of. And we're on eight and the building's called the future. So, wait a second. I don't know why you did that. What? Put the address? Yeah, the don't address. put the address. Shouldn't do that. <laughs> no, no, do that. Not a good move. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, no, no. So this is our green screen. Nothing too shabby. The whole premise of the facility was while we were you know, starting our careers, we realized that you recorded in one studio, you edited, you know, or mixed at another studio, you filmed the video somewhere else, then you had to edit the video somewhere else, then you had to color it somewhere else. So we wanted to have like a state-of-the-art, cross-disciplinary, creative vibe. So this is our mix room. Three years ago, Apple used this for their um, Beats One Radio was broadcast out of here to every iPhone. So surround sound mixes, that's why we have all the different speakers. It's our a little home. So when we first got the building, I brought Kanye in. I'm like, yo, Kanye, you gotta see my freaking compound. You know, we can do anything here. You know, we got shoe design, and I was like, you could go out and find factories. We don't necessarily need the giants. So I went to Italy and China to find a factory to make a shoe come to life. So this is our showroom for our glasses collection. So I started a brand called Eli. We have a direct relationship with the factory that makes the stuff in Italy. We designed the glasses here. I just wanted to have something of my own. But most celebrities, they want to like a check. They, 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 they want a check from a brand for a small percentage. I'm like, no, bump that. I'm not about that one. How about we like invest? And a quick commission is a short, you know, vision on, you know, when you want to see success. Do you want success right now with the upfront money or are you on that back end money play? I sit on the council of IoT and AI for the World Economic Forum. The problems that we have now are like, the immediate problems are like governance, 
algorithms for trading, algorithms for autonomous driving and safety, like whose life is the car gonna save? if it has sensors to know and identify. So these types of algorithms, these types of questions are the kind of things that we should, that everyone should be focused on when it comes to self-driving vehicles, IOT, and AI. So if you think of like this dystopian future that uh, Hollywood's done a good job telling about like AI, it's really when like one company dominates the conversation. Like so when you think of like Terminator or The Matrix, it's like one company. But if you think of like robotics and you know AI in Star Wars, the problem that humanity is fighting is not robots. It's not technology. Technology assists robot uh, humanity. And the reason why I bring that up as an optimistic way to look at robotics and artificial intelligence, because we're not afraid of that movie, because in that film, the empire was the thing that was holding humanity back. It's humans. So I don't think AI is gonna be a problem. Something is gonna push humanity to be more human and that's something that is better than what humans do and that's processing and thinking. Like we've able to predict the weather, we're about to be able to predict behavior. That's coming. What's up, Tams? Yo, what up, guys? So this is the art department and here's this little prototype of an amazing AI. So you have like the Apple HomePod, the Alexa speaker, the Google speaker. This is our rendition of that. You would get your phone, slide this up, dock it. Inside of it, there's five mics. Now I could talk from it from a distance and do all the type of voice commands, conversational stuff with something that looks pretty freaking badass, but at the same time, like the technology behind it, awesome speaker, sounds great, looks great. We didn't do it to distribute it, we just want to have proof of concept on our ideas to show our capabilities of, you know, dreaming and materializing. So check this out right here. Okay. We do all the AR here, do the graphic novel here. And what's cool about it is like, it's gold gilded. We just didn't want to do a comic book that's like flimsy. We wanted to have like awesome paper stock, gold gilding to where the product is beautiful and well thought out futurism where it's AR to take advantage of the technology that's on your phone. You can experience our story on Oculus. So here's our Oculus Go. It's one of the first VR experiences. It's an amazing project. I scored it with Hans Zimmer and Keith Harris. And it's a, like I said, it's the first of its kind. It's the first time AR graphic novel, the first time graphic novel in VR. Technology is gonna be so crazy. If we have racism in the world, in the next couple years we'll have machinism where machines have more rights than people. So that, that's, that's we, we all need to be like, you know, pay attention to like where we go because we're gonna end up into a place that we don't like real fast. With so much freedoms that we have, we're contradicting the whole concept of freedom of speech. But no one's really thinking and understanding the other side. And, and that's, that's a dangerous thing that we have on the internet where no one is really seeing eye to eye. And there's this disregard, this no empathy, no sympathy, because it's lawless. And that's the internet. As, as awesome as the technology is, we just have to learn to be a little bit more human on it. Because imagine if the AI starts scouring and learning from how we behave, how would it behave towards us? Now, if AI is dystop the dystopian future and it lashes out on humanity, how we behave on the platform is the reason why. Now, whose fault is that? Ours or how we're treating and teaching the, 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 the thing that's going to be understanding our behavior? Now, whose fault is that? That would be ours. So it's a mirror. And that's why we need to fucking have a little bit more empathy and understanding of, each, of one another. But at the end of the day, we're, we're all Americans. So we kind of have to like get rid of this division and like pointing of fingers. We need to like iron that up real fast because Republicans versus Democrats and then the independents are in the middle. That's a recipe for a, a fucked up America. No matter what your outcome is, get it. Go out there and try to freaking hike the tallest mountain 
scale the, the tallest wall, break through any barrier, go under it, around it, over it, through it, whatever it is, get it. And don't let your problems hold you back. If you could pay attention to your nightmares and pay attention to your problems, don't ignore your dreams. Life is so wonderful. Life is so beautiful. Life is amazing. Life can be terrible. Life is unbearable. Life is just crazy. Life is terrific. It's also horrific.